Welcome back folks, my name is Last No Meal and today we're going to talk about Cyberpunk Red. Two days ago, Artel Sorian shared a new post on their blog featuring the new edge runners that will appear in Cyberpunk Red Sourcebook, and they will also be predefined characters that you will be able to play with. But their main goal is to introduce you to the Night City during the time of the Red. This process is also a collaboration between Artel Sorian and some amazing people that inspired their characters with their own life stories. Keep in mind, more and more people now that sadly lost the limbs have a chance to get a prosthetic arm or a leg and some of them are now able to be controlled. And since this is becoming a new norm, it's important to talk about that. And I'm glad that Artel Sorian shared the stories of some of these individuals to also give their perspective and their voice because they can tell you how it is to actually live with an augmentation. And I believe that's extremely important. Now let's go over these edge runners and see what they have for us. First edge runner on the list is Kepler. Now Kepler is a nomad. Uh, she has cyber optics in both of her eyes, neural wear processor with interface plugs, and a gold cyber arm with the rippers. I like the idea of actually having a gold cyber arm. Definitely something I would like to see in Cyberpunk 2077 because let's face it. If we get enough eddies, I'm sure every single one of us would like to be blinged out. Now, Kepler comes from a Florida nomad pack that was always scrambling to make ends meet. She was born missing the lower half of her right arm, but due to the family's lack of money, she wasn't able to get fitted with Cyber until she ran off on her own and got the EB herself. Since that, she's made a living moving things and people that needed to go from A to B on the sly. These days, she usually teams up with her husband, the netrunner, Numo. Now, Numo, as we already said, is a netrunner and the husband of Kepler. Um, he has neural wear processor with interface plug, something which is extremely common for every person in the world of cyberpunk. He has an arm, a cyber arm with cyber deck and a cyber leg. Now, Numo got his sense of justice from his parents, honest cops in a corrupt system. He started net running early to fight the powers that be. When the London authorities caught wind of his activities, he ran. Unfortunately, his escape route led him into a horrible accident that almost killed him. With the help of his family, he survived, escaped and was rebuilt. Nomad smuggled him to the United States where he met and married Kepler. Next up, we have Damien. He is a techie. His Chrome is a neural wear processor with interface plug, something that everyone has, a cyber arm with a pop-out crossbow. Now this is something which sounds like a lot of fun and I'm not sure if we're gonna have a pop-out crossbow in Cyberpunk 2077 but it's definitely something which um, would be welcomed and um, he has a cyber optic in the right eye. We can also see um, the, the spider bot below him and that kind of tells you that Techies now have cyberbots that, for example, like Flathead that you have in Cyberpunk 2077, you will be able to control him and make use of this robot. Now, Damien was one of those kids. Either he was taking something apart or putting it back together or he was bored. Being forced by circumstances to get a cyber arm wasn't a negative in his eyes. It gave him a toy he could always tinker with. He could have gone out to be a cog in a corp machine, but instead he went the merc route, earning money so he can one day bring his tech to the world under his own name. I think this is really cool and I believe one thing which is also being discussed here um, in this blog is definitely how the world perceives augmentations with people because it's going to be a change that as technology moves forward, as people who lost their limbs are able to actually get um, those arms and legs and, you know, they become a more common practice, I'm sure that for some people that's going to be strange, but we need to remove that stigma of having mechanical parts in our body because at the end of the day, it's not going to be only used for bad things, it can also be used to help people and actually help them live their lives. Next up, we have Zara, who is a solo. Now, she has, again, a neural wear processor with interface plugs, a cyber arm with subdermal grip. 
speed wear and tech hair. I like this tech hair, by the way. So once upon a time, Zara did dirty work for high paying criminals. When things got too close for comfort, she's just moved on. New identity, new job. Then an enemy leaked all of her IDs to the world, so she skipped to the fringes and took on a new work, playing bodyguard and muscle for a group of edge runners. It doesn't pay much as it is, but a hell of a lot safer for now. And one thing I really, really like here is, of course, Zara's style, and the second of all, this bow. I do hope there is a bow in 2077. If there is, this is gonna be epic, especially because I wanna see how these cyber bows perform um but yeah it, it could be just um something that um is tied to cyberpunk red so don't think if someone here has a bow or has a certain piece of uh, cyberware that it's generally going to be um in cyberpunk 2077 Next up, we have Trace. Now, his role is the media role, and his Chrome is neural wear processor with interface plug, cyber arm, cyber eyes both with a micro recorder. This is extremely useful if you're a media, you want to be able to record on the fly because you want to get the news out of the way. Now, regarding his story, when your dad is the boss of an entire nomad nation, it can be hard to make your own mark on the world. Trey Santiago's trying to do just that as a media. He worked the legit outlets for a while, but his accent and his cyber arm didn't play well with the demographic algorithms. Hmm. Now, he's gone solo, uploading his own reports directly to the data pool. He just follows some leads that now could bust the history of the fourth corporate war wide open. I guess he is onto something here that finally will tell people what actually happened during the fourth corporate war. Now, one very interesting thing that you probably saw with the name, Trace Santiago is the son of Nomad Santiago from Cyberpunk 2020. So not only that this is um, a really nice collaboration, but this is also continuing the lore and the story from Cyberpunk 2020 to Cyberpunk Red and then all the way to Cyberpunk 2077. So that's a really cool thing to have. And the last but not the least, we have Lila. And you're probably wondering, is that Lila, the community manager for Cyberpunk 2077? Yes, she is. She got a role of a rocker boy, and I think it's a really cool thing to have someone from CDPR like Amelia to actually have her own character in Cyberpunk Red, so I think this is pretty goddamn cool. Now, her Chrome is neural wear processor with interface plug and a vocal modulator, which is something kind of normal for um, a rocker boy because you want to be able to mix your voice and the music you have on the fly, and to have an augmentation which allows that is pretty epic. Now, this is her story. Like a lot of rocker boys, Lila calls yeah, at home, or she did before she moved to Night City. She sticks to her roots, though, and plays a style she thinks as a cyber grunge. Her music pays homage to the greats from her hometown, but adds a new styles and 2045 sensibilities. Always looking for inspiration, she's hanging with a group of edge runners and helping them pull jobs. She knows she won't change the world if all she does is smile for the camera and make music videos. Of course, the rocker boys are extremely important in the world um, of cyberpunk. They usually share the truth through their lyrics uh, to talk about the system they are in, to talk about um, the people who are generally oppressing the society. So I think this is an extremely important role. And you're going to see why in Cyberpunk 2077 with Johnny Silverhand. And we also had a really nice ad for um, Xbox and it was actually featuring um, Johnny Silverhand having a concert. Um, there isn't anything special here. I'm sure that um, what they had shown there is the outline of Night City and how it's, you know, going to look. But um, again, it was a really cool ad and kind of, you know, makes you wonder how big of a concert is Johnny going to have in 2077? Because it's not a question if he's going to have a concert. My question is, how big? 
And that's pretty much everything we have for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Again, tell me down below what do you think about this? Are you excited about Cyberpunk Red and Cyberpunk 2077? Also, smash that like and subscribe button because I will be making more of these videos in the future. I follow everything that um, CDPR is doing, so if you want to stay updated with the latest news, click it and um, be informed. Also, don't forget to join our growing community on Discord and Twitter. And I made a Patreon, everyone. If you wanted an extra way to support the channel, you can check it out. And huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. This is LKM signing out, and stay classy, everyone. Bye-bye.